This is our country. We are owner of Canada. We are proud Canadian. Like share everybody. Like share. Hello Portia. Like share. This is our country. Sorry. We are owner of this country. We are. Go back to Europe. Go back to England. Deport our England people. You go back to Europe. You are not Canadian. We are Canadian. This is our country. You are invaders. We are native Indian. You go back. Well, this is wild. Uh, well, this just happened and took place in terms of a, an event that we see here in Surrey, BC. Uh, we just played this. You heard that correct. You are invaders. You don't belong here. Go back to Europe. Go back to Israel. We are the real Canadians. You go back. These are the words that were uttered. An event, a Khalistan event in BC. How are we supposed to take that? How are we supposed to feel about that? I don't know. I, mm, I would say a little offended. <laughs> what are we supposed to do with this? What are you supposed to take? How are you supposed to take this? At what point are you just like, this cannot be tolerated. This can I, I, I'm annoyed at myself for even having to cover it. I was trying to figure out some other story to cover for tonight, but the, this kept popping up and then supporting stores that came up as well. It's like, oh baby, we are in for it. And I hate, I promise, I promise you by next week, we'll have some hopium. We'll, we'll pump some hopium into the show uh, and we won't be so dire needs and so discouraged by this stuff. But this is brutal. Seeing this happen, I had to ask myself the what about, I, I couldn't keep myself from doing the what about, what about ism. What if this was a white guy saying uh, th this about any other ethnic group here in the country? I think we wouldn't hear the end of it. I think you'd see a tweet from Trudeau. I think almost every leader of the um, leader of a major party would have to come out and condemn it unequivocally, and rightfully so, they should. But when it's happening in BC, and a Cal Stanley's coming out and saying these words, which are wild in of themselves. Ah, we're going to act like oh, that didn't happen. And like, you know, we'll ever be an Aussie. It was one guy at some type of parade. We don't know if they all feel that way. Like, you know, and I'm talking and I'm talking, I'm talking academically right now. We have no, we have no idea the feelings of all these people. We just kind of get this guy in a live stream. who's just trying to hype people up and say some dumb things, but it is concerning. And obviously this has been blast all over social media. That's why I kind of want to put this back into context. Like, yeah, it's one guy. Don't really know what it's representing in terms of a, a, a large swath of people, this, that, the other. But let's not pretend like that would matter if this person was a different ethnicity. Saying this about another group of people. Let's not pretend that that would matter um, to our leading class here in the country. They wouldn't care. They've proven they shoot first and ask questions later. And so while, while this is going on, what is Trudeau doing? Oh, let's take a look. Are you ready for it? Trudeau says, we're ready for you, Taylor Swift. Good choice wrapping the Eras Tour in Canada. Has this always been your end game? Hashtag Toronto, Vancouver. Hashtag. Let's go. Let's go. That's what Trudeau had to say today. That's what was on his mind at 7.07 this evening. After this transpired earlier, nothing. Crickets. Things are getting very interesting. We obviously saw the results of what happened down south of the border, and a lot of the questions were floating around. How is this going to affect he us here in Canada? What is going to happen? And, well, there's some things that are should be ch discussed. So what was the big, one of the big mandates? Obviously, there was a, there was a wide variety of things that they're, the Americans wanted to see change in, and they want Trump to act on. What were some of the main things? Well, the main thing was immigration. And he's come out in no uncertain terms, hiring people in specific positions of power that have made it very clear of what they're going to do with the illegal immigrants in their country. So what do you think is going to happen to Canada? Do you think these illegal immigrants are planning to go, want, want to go back to where they came from? I know if I just risked my life going to America, I would find any which way possible to make sure I didn't have to go back. So where do you think they're going to go? 
let's ask this former CBSA officer who was being interviewed on C- on CBC. Been hearing from uh, our government, uh, especially recently, um, but what we've been listening to for the last decade, uh, frankly, is is quite misleading. We don't have a border uh, patrol. We don't have the number of uh, officers needed to adequately enforce our customs and our immigration laws at the borders, let alone in our communities. We're about to experience a tsunami, a tsunami of uh, people who are living illegally in the United States seeking asylum in Canada. And we do not have the capacity and it's going to bring organized crime with it too. Uh, What we've been hearing. So that's coming. That's what's going to happen. That's just a natural issue. And what he said here is true. Obviously, it's been the idea of border security has not exactly been on the topics of priorities here in this country never really have had to really think about it just because ah, it's america below us you know and there's typically not people who are trying to like hop the border all that often to come into canada typically that's kind of been the general idea but things have changed in the past 10 years america's always gone through so much turmoil in their political system and it's pushed more of some traffic to our border that we are so not ready to take care of and this is what gets really interesting I think back to the race in 2015 for prime minister. I think back to a debate that took place. And the things that Harper warned Canadians that Trudeau would do is happening before our very eyes. Take a listen. On the issue of refugees, this remains. This remains one of the largest countries in the world in terms of refugee resettlement, including for Syria and Iraq. I have said we will bring in more. But what I have said we will not do. You know, these guys would have had in the last two weeks us throwing open our borders and literally hundreds of thousands of people coming without any kind of security check or documentation. And that's some other not true, Mr. Done, Harper. That would have been an enormous mistake. See, we're following a Mr. balanced Harper approach. We're bringing more refugees. Fears okay. we're, all the time. Providing fears more of humanitarian others, support fears of different communities. And we're taking we have a prime minister who, who prefers to pander to okay. fears. Let's go to Mr. Mul- what was the game there? Not true, Mr. Harper. That's, that's so blatantly no, false. He gaslights Stephen Harper on the stage here like he's been gaslighting all of us for the past nine years. Oh, that's not true. That's not happening. That's not going on. People telling Canadians to get lost and go back to Europe. That's not happening. Mass immigration's tearing apart the country. That's not happening. Vaccine mandates are killing people, literally. Oh, that's not happening. None of this is happening. Get, get lost. We see a prime example right here of Trudeau telling Harper, oh, that's not... Come on, that is so false. You you just want to prey on people's fears. Does that sound familiar? Sound familiar with what he's been saying to Polyev and House of Commons? Of course it is. This is Trudeau's game. It's all it has been. He knows what he's doing, or maybe he doesn't know, and maybe he's just totally out of the lunch. But he knows what he's doing to a degree. He knows what he's doing is tearing apart the very fabric of this country. He doesn't care because he's getting rich. His friends are getting rich. What was that? The the figure today with Mr. Steve Ann Gibo funneled close to $214 million to businesses he's associated with. Woo! And don't get me started on Randy Boisineau, who's uh, apparently indigenous now and accessing funds for indigenous businesses. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. Oh, no. Oh, shoot. I might get a YouTube strike for saying that. You know, the reason why I was late doing this show tonight was because Jody Wilson-Raybould was here in town and I had to take the opportunity to go see her. She was talking about her new book, talking about a lot of different issues around indigenous issues. Thought it was interesting. But I had the opportunity to finally meet her at the end of the night. And I had to express to her my gratitude for standing up for what was right. Standing up when no one else in that friggin' party will stand up except for a handful of people. And she was one of them. Thank you for standing up for Canadians. Setting up to the the start of so much corruption in that party, led by this man. Thank you, Jody wilson Rabel, for what you did. Yes, you ended up losing your job over it, which stinks. But it's awesome to see a woman stand on principle. And we need more of you in politics. We need more of us in politics who are willing to take a stand when things are so corrupt. As we've seen through this time, through this government, things have gotten worse and worse and worse. The gaslighting continues, continues, and continues. That's not happening. You're dreaming that. You're a racist. You're a bigot. You're a misogynist. Man, we're just expressing our concerns. But yes, keep calling us names. See how that goes. It was awesome. 
I have to admit seeing Tulsi Gabbard, this was an older video of her reacting to Trudeau testifying over the use of the Emergencies Act. You know what? We're going to pull that up right now. This helps me feel that we're not alone. To demand uh, changes to public policy um, is something that, that I think is, is, is worrisome. Okay. So here we have the Prime Minister of Canada saying that, yes, we have a highly functioning democracy and people's voices, the Canadian people's voices should be heard and they have the right and freedom to protest. However, if those protests are used to demand change in government policy, then no, that shouldn't be allowed. Just in that statement in and of itself, you got to wonder how this guy doesn't see the hypocrisy in his singular phrase. But Tulsi's so on point here. And it's nice to see someone who is now the director of national intelligence in the States seeing what's happening in Canada, validating what we see and feel is nice to see. It's nice to see leaders in the States see what is happening up here and that we as Canadians are not going crazy. We're not bad people for calling out what we're seeing. We're not terrible people for calling out the concerns we have. And obviously we had, you know, she's alluding to the issue of Trudeau cracking skulls, shutting down protests that spoke against him. Nine years of Trudeau. You don't think the border's going to keep getting worse? We'll take a look at this. 14,000 asylum claims by international students who don't want to go back home. We saw that the crackdown come down from the Minister of Immigration here in Canada. Mr. Mark Miller. He said, yeah, we are done bringing as many international done bringing in as many international students as we have. We're going to kind of clean this up a bit, try to quell the storm and try to figure out what's going on here before we start bringing in more people. And all those international students that are here were expected to go back home. Instead, they looked for the loophole in our system and they started claiming asylum. This is what Mark Miller had to say about that. He says in the second paragraph, I'd like to raise an important and concerning issue of which I am sure you are aware. The growing number of international students claiming asylum in Canada. I am concerned by reports that some of these students are being counseled by third parties to do so and to provide false information. Canada is dedicated to aiding individuals in need of protection. However, counseling asylum seekers to misrepresent themselves to remain in Canada or seek permanent residence would be contrary to the objectives of Canada's immigration system. And as you know, if licensed immigration consultants are participants, their involvement could continue constitute a violation of Section 12, the Code of Professional Conduct, or a college of immigration and citizenship consultants licensees, which states that its licensee must not in any of their professional dealings knowingly assist in or encourage dishonesty, fraud, or legal conduct. So here he is flexing the muscles a little bit. We will do s- it's what you're doing is against the law if you're doing it, but we know this government has no teeth. They're as soft as 12 ply toilet paper. S A W F T. That's what they are. And the cowardice, spineless, weak leaders in this country have allowed this mess to happen. When you kick out the Jody Wilson-Rables of the world, the Jane Philpops of the world, this is what you get. Chaos in the country. No, but it's not really going on. You know it is. And I don't want to see it get worse before we say we need to do something about it. We have far lost control of what's going on here. This is no longer a country that is actually helpful for people to come to anymore. It's actually a country people come to and have are worse off from where they came from because of lack of balances, lack of accountability, and lack of process. This is where we're at, folks. And to top it all off of the craziness Sunday, take a look what Mississauga mayor had to say about the leader of Hamas. Well, thank you for your advice. Um, You're free to do whatever you want. You're free to say whatever you want. I am not. My job is to consult with our lawyers and do exactly what they tell me. So I just want to point out, and I'm not being facetious, Nelson Mandela was declared a terrorist by the United States of America until the year 2008. Your terrorist and somebody else's terrorist may be two different things. But uh, I am extremely careful, and I do not step out of line. But you're free to do whatever you like and suffer the consequences if there should be any. Leaked audio from the mayor of Mississauga. Those who don't know, it's a suburb of Toronto. 
She's equating the leader of Hamas to Nelson Mandela. These people are clinically insane. They are literally nuts lost in their own craziness. It was funny last night on the sh- uh, our, one of our tech talks, someone who's been consistently commenting on our, our content for uh, probably the better part of three years said that we're radicalized. And I'm like, dude, you've drifted so far left that you think we're the radical ones. That shows you where your politics have, left, have become. That people calling out common sense issues are radical. Okay, got it. And this is where we are. When you start comparing the leader of Hamas to Nelson Mandela, that is where you've lost a plot. And you side with people like this, shows you that you're absolutely nuts. Well, that's the show, folks. I promise, as I said, I'll throw some hopium your way next week. We're going to talk about what we need to do to get involved in your local politics, to take some ownership of what's going on in your communities. Love you. Have a good one. I'm out.